Hello and welcome to another episode of Despite the Challenges. I'm host Ritu Chopra, a show where we showcase people with amazing abilities who have not only overcome obstacles and impeding circumstances, they just don't stop there. They go in the community, do good things, inspire us all. Today, my guest is Dr. Rolf Hassan Williams. Mr. Williams served in the Army as an Airborne Army officer for 21 years. And he has served the school district as a music teacher for 27 years in Newark, New Jersey. With amazing accomplishments over the years, he has been inducted in the Alabama Jazz Hall of Fame in 1994, had many, many awards, uh, and has inspired many people. As you know, the music is art of thinking with sounds, the sounds of music. Let's hear directly from my guest, Dr. Ralph Hassan Williams. Hello, hi. Welcome to the show, Mr. Williams. Well, thank you for inviting me. I really appreciate this opportunity. Glad to see you here. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about you. Well, I was born in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, very poor family uh, in the black neighborhood there. And this was during the time when segregation was very strong, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, I went to high school, graduated from high school with honors. Wow. Um, then I went on to college, mm -hmm. and I attended Tennessee State University in mm -hmm. Nashville, Tennessee. And of course, um, that was during the civil rights demonstrations, during the sit-ins, mm -hmm. uh, when people would walk up behind you and pour ketchup on your head, and hit you in the head and call you all kinds of names. Well, that was my generation. I was a part of that mm -hmm. in Nashville. So after going through that for at least three or four years, mm -hmm. I finally graduated. By the way, uh, college was probably the most challenging part of my, one of the most challenging parts of my life mm -hmm. because of the fact that uh, I was poor. And uh, if it had it not been for my music, mm -hmm. I would not have been able to make it through there, you know. I wanted to step back. You said because you were poor and yes. uh, college was tough. Um, a lot of people have the same challenges. Right. And I'm sure even in this day and age, there's a lot of bright students out there. Right. And finances might be challenges. Was there anything else? Beside not having enough money, uh, or uh, besides financial reason, anything else that was challenging? Did you n not feel that you would be able to graduate, or it was something was motivating you inside? Well, there were times that I felt I would not be able to graduate because of the financial situation. I see. Okay. However. Um, Something within me just told me to hang in there and to keep trying. Mm, okay. And that's what I did. And I made it the best way that I could. And the result is graduation. And you, and you kind of tagged on on your talent with the music. That's what saved me. Oh, I tell, tell us about me. how did you get into music? When did you get well, into music? Well, let's see. My dad and my mother were sort of amateur musicians. Okay. And when I say amateur musician, I mean musicians that perform just for the art. They didn't make any money, mm -hmm. you see. Mm -hmm. They were just, they weren't professional. Mm -hmm. uh, so <clears throat> listening to my dad sing mm -hmm. and listening to my mother play the piano sort of inspired me. So when I was a kid, I would try to sing and play the piano. Um, and they both were, was encouraging, especially my mother. Hmm. She was okay. encouraging to me. I was very lucky because of the fact that uh, I started off in the Catholic school in elementary, when I was going to elementary school. Mm -hmm. And I was singing in the choir 
And one of the nuns, who was the choir director, said, you know what, you ever thought about being a musician? Oh, wow. Like I, never thought, yeah, <laughs> I never thought about it. Uh -huh. And uh, I said, no. She said, well, you know, you should look into that. You should try. And that was it. That changed my entire life. So you, you know, uh, through high school well, and... Uh, all the way through high school, through, nothing but learning, music. Right. Nothing but music. Now, here's the problem. Uh -huh. I had to leave Catholic school. Uh -huh because of the fact that they didn't have instrumental program there. Okay, okay. So I transferred to public school. I see. And I had the most fantastic band director in the world. He was a very professional musician. Uh, he had performed with Louis Armstrong. He had performed wow. with uh, Lucky Millinder and all of the greats back there in the 40s. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, oh yeah, he was okay. he was a tremendous musician, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I was very lucky. You know, it's it's such an unfortunate experience to have a master, a teacher, a trainer like that. That's right. You know, the perspectives, these perspectives change, right. and when they come and touch other lives, that's right. They bring all that with them. And he was a good example too. He was an excellent example okay. of not only a great teacher, but a great individual. Mm -hmm. He was very beautiful, and he would personally go to his students' homes, and he knew all the parents, mm -hmm. and uh, he was a very inspiring, very inspiring Music person. has a lot of power. So, so you came, you were in college years, and right. then all challenges right. as a grown-up man, then you start well, seeing the word. And let me tell you about college. <laughs> I mean, it was a challenge in college because of the fact that uh, there were great musicians there in college. Okay, so now you were surrounded by other... Uh, great musicians. Uh, great I had musicians. To do so that was another challenge. Yeah, that was a big <laughs> one. Please believe me. That was, oh my God. Uh -huh. Hank Crawford, are you familiar with him? Yes. Hank Crawford um, was the music director for Ray Charles, mm -hmm. and he also played the saxophone, mm -hmm. and he was the arranger for Ray mm -hmm. Charles. Well, when I got to college, when I arrived at Tennessee State University, Hank was a senior, okay. and he was a challenge. We were in the same section, instrumental what, did section. Did you play instruments? Yes, I played Mostly? the alto did you, saxophone did and you the tenor sing sax. also? No, I didn't sing. No. Okay. <laughs> when I left. Me. When I left the uh, middle school, mm -hmm. the Catholic school, that was the end of my singing career. I see, I you see. Know, although, so you, you played know, instrument. I played an instrument because uh, for some reason the saxophone just appealed to me. Okay. I, you know, I could hear it in my head all the time. I see. I mean, as a kid. Uh -huh. And I said, this is what I am going to play. So when you graduated from college. Uh -huh. What was your aspiration at that time? Go into music, become a perfecting oh, yeah. musician, or how did you come oh, to the army yeah. then? <laughs> I was headed straight for New York City. Okay. <laughs> because uh -huh. everybody was, mm -hmm. was was encouraging me to go ahead and do yeah. it. Mm -hmm. I got married, mm -hmm. and I had responsibilities. Yes. Now you start. So I more said, practical wait terms. a minute now, hold it. <laughs> Uh -huh. Because I remember my band director, the one I was telling you about, his mm -hmm. name, by the way, was uh, Mr. Amos F. Gordon. Mm -hmm. He was a very, very excellent musician. So um, he would tell me that when he was on the road, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when I say on the road, I mean when he was performing, performing with the band yes, and all yes. that, he would come home. Mm -hmm. And he would be away from home for so long sometimes, mm -hmm. his kid didn't recognize him. So um, I said, well, somebody suggested, you know, if you join military, maybe that might be a oh, good thing I for see. you. I see. But I didn't want to go. Mm -hmm. I said, mm, no. My boy was telling me, don't worry about that. The next third letter they sent, <clears throat> they said, if you don't come, we coming to get you. <laughs> See, I have no choice now. No choice. I'm going. Oh, I. So I went 
and I took the test and all that. I, I got to admit, I didn't, I didn't try to pass the test, but I passed Intentionally? it. <laughs> but I passed it. <laughs> you were meant to. I passed it. So. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's so, so funny. <laughs> so the sergeant, the sergeant told me, said, told us, uh -huh. I said, well, you know, I'm playing in, in Louisville, and, uh, you know, the, the band is expecting me to come back tonight, and all mm. this kind of stuff to do the performance. So you're trying to get out of it? Yeah, I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to get home. So uh, the, 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 um, the sergeant said, oh, don't worry about it. Said, mm. um, we'll let you go tomorrow. Oh, okay. The next thing I knew, I was in a room with my right hand up in the air pledging allegiance to the United States of America. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I'm in the army. All right. What so, a transition. Oh, my God. Have mercy. But you know, uh -huh. here's the most important thing, I think, as far as my life is concerned. I didn't realize I had leadership abilities. Oh. And when they tested me, oh, okay. they found out that I had leadership abilities. Ability, and mm -hmm. I said, "Who me?" He said, "Yeah, you got leadership ability, so we can use people like you." It must so, have been what a pleasant surprise. Yeah, I mean a big surprise because <laughs> I wasn't yes. thinking about leading nothing but a band, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but you and, did lead the band. So yeah, eventually. Eventually. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, I didn't have all I wanted to do was just play and you know, play just the play lead music. and the saxophone yes. and all that kind of stuff. So, um, believe it or not, with the, it was very difficult. I, I remained in the service for 21 years, as I said. I went through the Armed Forces School of Music, which is mm -hmm. similar to a graduate school. Okay. And I had to go through an officer's course. Okay. And uh, it, this officer's course has the highest attrition rate mm -hmm. of any of the Armed Forces School. Oh, there were okay. 40... 46 of us, I think, that started out, mm -hmm. and only six graduated. Oh, wow. That's... And I was among the six. Of course. Yeah, oh, my God. Uh -huh. I mean, it's a year's course. Okay. And uh, the first part, the first six months is elimination. Mm -hmm. Then you go on into the advanced course. Mm -hmm. And I was lucky. <clears throat> so I went into service. Uh, they chose me to go to the... 82nd Airborne Division. Now, I don't know whether you are familiar with your Army divisions or not. Mm, not as much, but. Well, the 82nd Airborne Division is the premier fighting okay. force in the United oh, States. Okay. Army, let me put it that way. In the United States Army. I think it's the best in the world, to be honest with you. And uh, the challenge is, is that you have to jump out of airplanes. Hmm. And that's what airborne means. Okay. And uh, airplane, I was, so it's not the helicopter or the low flying. Well, sometimes you jump out of helicopters. Okay. It depends. Okay. You know, but the majority of the times you 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 would uh, jump out of a C one thirty or a C one forty one or C five or something. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of guys would tease me mm -hmm. and say. Uh, what make you want to jump out of a perfectly good airplane? <laughs> what I made said, you jump out of I a perfectly said, oh, good airplane? You go. <laughs> <laughs> well, for your information, I want you to know that there's no such thing as a perfectly good airplane because all of them crash. <laughs> so, so that was kind of uh, not expected, of course, where you were right. thinking of your mu music right. career. You came and in Army, you passed advanced mm -hmm. courses. Now, here's the funny thing about that, and mm -hmm. I'm kind of proud of this. Mm -hmm. I was the first black to command the band Congratulations. At, with the 82nd M1 Division. I was the first wow. one out of the history of that division. History of the division. Okay. And see, this is the division that one of the divisions that led the conquest of Germany. That okay. led, yeah, that I they see. were one of the first to so hit the you, beach uh, to, to go into Normandy. Mm -hmm. You remember, uh, did you see the movie, uh, The Longest Day? Yes. You remember the paratroopers that were jumping and one got caught in the steeple of the chapel and all that mm -hmm. good stuff? One was hanging, I think it was red buttons. Well, that was my division. 
a second airborne division. And uh, it's the premier division in the in mm. the United States Armed Forces. I mean, yes. when you so say you you're... must have been so proud to be where you oh, ended up. Oh, kidding! Oh boy, it I was super duper been. proud. Wow! And then I was considered the best uh -huh. in the army, as far as being the band director or band. Okay commander or whatever. Yes, and I see that you have received quite a few awards there. You got a lot. Um, National Federation of Music Club Award of Merits, then you have Forcecom Awards mm -hmm. of Excellence, mm -hmm. Best Show Band, Best right. Arranger, Best right. Conductor. Right. Oh gosh, this is a long list here. Yeah. Uh, and that's not all. I just oh, stole a few things. <laughs> yes, and I see I that you, you worked see. with uh, Bill Cosby, and right. you worked with Charlie, Charles Davis, and mm -hmm. this list goes on and on. I want to hear from you. Well, uh, so, so now you are in army. You uh, are leading a band. You right. are in a um, talented officer. Right. Uh, so, and as a poor kid, mm -hmm. and as a man who came from a humble beginning. Humble beginning. Right. Thank you. Um, I went all over the world, everywhere, Australia, uh, Japan, uh, mm -hmm. Korea, you name it, I was there, mm -hmm. Philippines. But this was never in the battlefield. No. No. But as, but as, I, a, as a, you're, uh, you're taking a chance on it, it's worse than the battlefield because you're jumping out of an <laughs> airplane. <laughs> Yes. People on the battlefield don't jump out of airplanes. They sit They're around. On the ground. <laughs> they sit around waiting on something to happen. Yes. <laughs> you see what so I mean? How, how did it change your perspective? Um, all that you were doing in army and mm -hmm. music is something different. Here, uh, music touches soul. Right. It doesn't have any boundary of language. That's right. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and. And then you are on the other extreme where you are in a very prestigious mm -hmm. army unit mm -hmm. and jumping out of an airplane. Of my, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, a general told me, General Herbert, he was like mm -hmm. my father. He said, it's a dirty job, but mm -hmm. somebody's got to do it. Somebody got to do it. And Williams, we must be crazy. <laughs> said, Let's but jump. <laughs> it really brought you a lot of pride oh, yeah. and a lot of experience uh, traveling the world. And I'm sure hey. as a musician you may have also hey. traveled. Jumping out of the airplane is the easiest part. The biggest challenge is the training that you get to jump. Okay. You know, and that means there's a rigorous exercise routine or program that they have you going to. You never walk. In jump school, you run everywhere, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and this is this goes on. You have to be in a perfect physical oh, and mental condition. Both. You, <laughs> why? You have to do it uh -huh. so that your body can withstand the shock, the shocks, and everything else that involves contact with the ground once you jump. Mm -hmm. So you have to be in good physical condition. Mm -hmm. You see. So when you left Army, I'm sure it's, it must have been an outstanding experience oh, traveling was, all over the world. Oh, and, you know, and they didn't want me officer. to leave, to be honest with you, but and I left. When you left, mm -hmm. the transition coming to a school district teaching children. Yes, well now here's the thing. I spent 21 years serving my country. Mm -hmm. So I said, well wait a minute. If I spent 21 years serving my country, that I can spend equal amount of time or more mm -hmm. serving the black community. And you chose. And that's what I did. To come here, East Coast. I was in Trenton first at Junior okay. One, mm -hmm. and then I transferred to Newark, to Shabazz High School. Okay. And uh, we were considered one of the best high school bands in the state. Yes, I see that you mm -hmm. mentioned Malcolm X Shabazz Band. Malcolm X Shabazz High School in Newark. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's still going on. Uh, great kids. Mm -hmm. The kids in Newark are the most talented kids that I have <coughs> had the opportunity to work with. And I've worked with a lot of young people. Mm -hmm. 
expert. They are so talented. And I'm sure that you may have found some cases that children came from uh, families that they needed some inspiration. Oh, yeah. And music mm -hmm. is such a good inspiration. Right. And it gave them, it kept them out of trouble because I had rehearsals mm -hmm. after school. Okay. And mm -hmm. as long as they wanted to stay, I would stay. I was talking to a lady prior to the program, and she told me that she worked to 10 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> she had two jobs. But I had one job, mm -hmm. but I worked until 10 o'clock at night. Because you loved it. And that was year-round. Mm -hmm. And as long as the kids wanted to stay there, mm -hmm. I would be there. I was telling you about this young man, uh, Rashi Sheffield. Mm -hmm. I wanted to mention him. Uh, outstanding. He, he started with me when he was in middle school. Okay. And he was playing drums mm -hmm. with a high school band in middle mm -hmm. school. Then he came to high school. And, of course, me being a former leader in, in the service, I can spot the leadership. Right away. Oh, yeah. I can tell the ones that's got it. Uh-huh. So I spotted him. Uh -huh. I said, come here, son. So he came over. And I said, you know, I like the way you move. I like the things that you do. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put you in charge of. Wow. And I don't think he had been in charge like that before, you know. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Something unbelievable. Yeah. And um, boy, he made me so proud. I mean, as, as a freshman. So he graduated from high school. Mm -hmm. He went to Norfolk State. Okay. He became a captain there within the band program. Wow. And you know that made mm -hmm. me proud. And to put icing on the cake, he came back to Newark hey. in order to help the community. So he took my place when I retired. Place. Anything that stands out in your experience working with school uh, in Newark, uh, any, any stories that changed their lives just because they were introduced to music. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. And a lot of them didn't realize that they had musical talent. Mm -hmm. And I would tell them, uh, you know, you might have musical talent mm -hmm. and don't know it. So why don't you try okay. this instrument? And let's, see what, let's see what you can mm -hmm. do with this. Mm -hmm. And some of them, well, well, I didn't know I could do this. I said, okay. see? You put them on the spot yeah, and tell put them? Yeah, put them right there. Right there. And they'll take care of business. Mm -hmm. And, of course, um, I had experience enough mm -hmm. to teach them the right way, like mm -hmm. my band director taught me. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? And the next thing you know, they're playing and getting scholarships to college and all kinds of wow. good stuff. I got one girl, young lady, that's at uh, Lincoln mm -hmm. in Pennsylvania right now. She is an outstanding musician. Well. And she's doing her thing. I, I spoke with her about two weeks ago, mm -hmm. and she's doing her number. I mean, she is really doing outstanding. She is That's an so excellent inspiring. student. And then the band director there, he just, man, thank you so much for sending her. <laughs> I really appreciate it and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. How would you use music as an instrument to mm -hmm. explore themselves? Well, here's the thing about being a musician, especially a creative musician. Mm -hmm. The more you learn about music, mm -hmm. the more you learn about yourself. Yes. You see what I mean? You challenge yourself. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> like I was telling the kids, you don't pick your instrument. Instruments pick you. Your instrument pick you. Yeah. You see it's what I'm saying? Thinking with sounds. There you go. Yes. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's, music is such a, a creative spiritual force. Yes. It's like um, Art Blakey, a great musician, used to put it this way. He would say that it, it came from the creator mm -hmm. through your brain mm -hmm. out through your body. So don't you get too <clears throat> cocky and... and, and <laughs> want to take credit because <laughs> it's, it's not you yes. that's doing this. Yes. You see what I yes. mean? So when, you, yeah. when you're a musician, you're sort of a special 
messenger. You, you're a magnet. Oh, yeah. The magnet. You're because, a spiritual force. Yes. And, and hey, you we know. need that in this world. Oh, absolutely. Uh -huh. In this day and age, and I'm sure that there are many, many communities around the country, around the world, and there's so many children, they don't have proper guidance. Right. And I personally feel that something art and music is such a powerful way to touch those generations. That's exactly right. And right. Uh, it, it gives them some type of inspiration also yes. uh, to expire them, like me, for instance. I mean, yes. I, wa I often wonder, because I can't imagine it, but I often wonder what would happen had I not been a musician. Mm -hmm. I wonder what I would have How done. How become? You know, I was thinking at one time of becoming mm -hmm. a lawyer. Mm -hmm. But... It didn't fit in anywhere. <laughs> You became great musician. Yeah, you became become, great army officer. I don't think lawyer would have been the right career choice for I you. Think, I think I think the Almighty Creator led me in the right direction. Uh -huh. And I mm -hmm. um, I I don't want to be too verbose, but um, you know I, I had a good habit when I was young mm -hmm. of listening to the older people. Okay. I listen to what they tell me. Mm -hmm. Oh, even when I joined service. I listened to the older people, the older soldiers. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't hard-headed. I was very open-minded. And I think that's one of the things that helped me a lot, too. That's very good that you learn mm. from others' experiences, oh, and especially yeah. people who are older generation. And see, I told my kids in high school, listen to the older people, mm. because my mother used to tell me, you don't see any old fools. <laughs> yes. You very seldom when you they meet always an old experience. fool. They always <laughs> have more experience. That's exactly so, right. Uh, anything that you would like to say to our audience? Well, I think that uh, please support your music programs because music is one of the greatest art forms on this planet. And, and it's, it's more than that to be honest with you. Uh, it's a way, that, uh, music is a way that the creator, one of the ways that the creator communicates to people on earth, regardless of what type of music you're playing, whether it's jazz or Mozart or Bach or any of the Indian music. I love Southern Indian music, uh, African music, but it's a spiritual force. Regardless, I listen to pygmy music. I'm serious. <laughs> and boy, let me tell you, you want to hear some, some natural sounds, listen to pygmy music. I'm telling you. I will. I'm, I will. Please, please. Will do, yes. And uh, if you want to hear a, a, a preview of that, mm -hmm. just take a walk in the morning and listen to the birds. Oh, right. I will do so. And listen to the rhythms mm -hmm. that well. the birds are singing. Very nice, very nice. I will, I will. Okay. It was a pleasure having you here, Mr. William. I thank you pleasure. so much. Thank you. Thank you for coming, and uh, we'll hear more about you, your music, well. uh, and I uh, hope that you keep inspiring your communities. Oh boy, but well, I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm always looking for the opportunity to do it. You know, and I really appreciate you inviting me. To be honest with you. Thank you. And what a lovely gracious lady you are. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. I am host Ritu Chopra and you are watching Despite the Challenges. Until next time.